This question appeared in INICT in November 2020 and it talks about a 55 year old man which presented with palpitations for 2 hours and dizziness. At the time of admission, his systolic blood pressure was 70. An urgent ECG was done which showed narrowed complex tachycardia. Which of the following is correct about management of this case? And your options are A. IV adenosine B. IV verapamil C. IV fluids and D. DC cardioversion So this is a very very interesting question and if you see the options they are placed very closely and we will evaluate all the options very carefully. Now before I go and take this question, I'll discuss some very very important concepts. Now based on the clinical history, we can make out that we are talking about PSVT. So what is the management protocol of PSVT? So the first, most of these cases are well tolerated, okay, and initially even uh, any vagal maneuvers, any vagal maneuvers are sufficient to terminate any episode of VSVT. What are these vagal maneuvers? You know, you can go for Valsava maneuver or even carotid sinus massage. Okay. Most of these cases are well tolerated. If vagal maneuvers do not help, then you should go for IV adenosine. Okay. If this also does not work, then you have to see whether the patient is hemodynamically stable or not. If the patient is hemodynamically stable, okay, so hemo, if the patient is hemodynamically stable, then you can go for IV, you know, either beta blockers or IV calcium channel blockers, okay. If the patient is not hemodynamically stable, then the management of choice will become DC cardio person. If the patient who is hemodynamically stable, if they do not respond, you have to go for DC cardio person. And if there is a recurrent case of PSVT, troublesome case of PSVT, which is not responding to drugs, then ultimately it will be catheter application. Okay. So this is overall the management of PSVT. Now we will look into you know uh, this particular management protocol in terms of what the question has been asked. Before that, let me talk cover a very very high topic which frequently has been asked in the examination. Uh, you know multiple questions in terms of uh, pathogenesis, in terms of clinical features, in terms of management. So let me talk about AVN reentry tachycardia. So this is remember this is the most common form of PSVT okay it generally happens from second to fourth decade of life and what is the mechanism mechanism is basically re-entry involving the AVN or AV mode okay and remember a very frequent asked question is generally AVNRT is not associated with any structural heart disease. So this is very important. This has been asked in the examination that AVNRT is not associated generally with any structural heart disease. How will the patient present? What will be the clinical features of such patients? So they are often well tolerated. Remember, often they are well tolerated and the only symptom will be, you know, recurrent, recurrent sudden tachycardia. Now this becomes very, you know, problematic in elderly patients. So in elderly patients, in elderly patients, this recurrent tachycardia may even present as angina, may present with pulmonary edema or even hypotension leading to syncope. So these are the generally clinically presenting features. How do we diagnose it? 
So a ECG is generally enough to make a diagnosis. So what will you see in ECG? So you will see very narrow URX complex. So there will be tachycardia 120 to 160, but there will be narrow QRX complex and the P wave will be buried in the QRS complex. So the PR interval will be very short or non-existent. Okay, because the P wave gets worried in the QRX complex. So this is a very, very important concept. So let me show you an ECG which will further demonstrate it. So you can see very narrow, very narrow QRS complex. And you know, if I zoom out, you will see that there is no P wave. P wave because the P wave gets buried in the QR in the QRS complex. So you know it's very difficult to see a separate P wave here. Okay, very very difficult to find a separate P wave. Very difficult somewhere here you can see okay that you know the P wave gets buried in the QRS complex. So this is a typical you know ECG. Uh, which they may give you in examination. They have already given such kind of ECG in the examination. So this is the ECG finding. Finally, coming to the management. Again, management remains the same. Most of these cases are well tolerated and generally a vagal maneuver will be enough to terminate, you know, such kind of episodes. But if the system, if, if the symptoms are persisting, then you can go for IV adenosine. Okay, this is the first line. Okay, both of these can be considered as first line management then if both of these do not work okay and the patient is hemodynamically stable okay if the patient is hemodynamically stable you will go for IV beta blockers or IV calcium channel blockers like IV verapamil or IV diltiazam so all these drugs will be used if the patient is unstable hemodynamically then straight away you have to go for DC conversion, R waved synth conversion of uh, around 100 to 200 joules. Okay, if the patient is stable but he is not responding to this IV beta blockers or calcium channel blockers, then you have to upgrade it to DC cardioversion. And if the symptoms are recurrent, then you will have to go for catheter ablation okay and this is generally curative in 95 percent of the cases and we know the big uh, you know risk for catheter ablation is a uh, permanent heart block leading to a requirement of permanent pacemaker so this is overall about the management of avian uh, rt now before i discuss the question a small announcement that we have just launched our neat pg pyq q bank uh, it has questions from 2018 to 2023 because I still feel that if you are able to get grasp of past 5, 8, 10 years question bank very, very, you know, nicely, you will cover most of the higher topic and almost 70 to 80 percent of the questions will come from these topics only. The direct question may not be repeated, but if you cover these topics, most of the questions will be repeated. It's available on Amazon. It's available on Flipkart. And if you, you know, buy it from our medical app store, then you will get a free shipping plus a lot of good, you know, um, other benefits also all that is mentioned in the comment of this video so just go and check it out so now let's look at this question so it's a 55 year old male and that is why i told you in the examination most of these are well tolerated until late age when they will start having more frequent symptoms so 55 year old with dizziness okay he has tachycardia but here is where i want you to focus his bp systolic bp is only 70 so he, here we are looking at a hemodynamically unstable patient and this narrow QRS complex uh, uh, gives us an idea that we are talking about PSVT. So because we are talking about DC cardi, uh, you know, hemodynamically unstable patient, so DC cardioversion will become our management of choice. Remember, we will never give IV fluids. It, it should not be contraindicated in fact, because it will lead to development of pulmonary edema. And this is the first line. This is the second line, but you know, all these are done only in hemodynamically stable patients. So your correct answer is DC cardioversion.